Hello there, folks, and welcome to another one of our interview series. Today, we're joined by Professor Natalie Brandis, who is a professor in Texas at a community college, also the author of a brand new book, if I can get that all in the frame there, Texas Rocks, um, part of the series that was started by Mountain Press and now continuing on with uh, GSA, the Geological Society of America. Thanks for joining us today, Natalie. Thank you for having me. Yeah, this is great. So maybe let's start with um, what these books are about, and I'll I'll maybe give it my spin or my take on things, and then let's and then we'll come to you and see if you have anything to add, or maybe you can correct me if I get anything wrong. So there's basically three series of books that GSA now owns that are available to the public. There's the 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 state rocks one so this is the the texas rocks one here that we're going to talk mainly about um there's the there we go roadside geology book and this is also a new one we can talk briefly about and then i don't have the copy on me but i wrote one but there's also geology underfoot so just so people know the difference between the three i would say and it, correct me if you agree or if you if you think i'm wrong here that the the Geology Underfoot book are super in-depth um, and, you know, for specific sites. The roadside books are sort of like just things you drive by. They cover a lot of area, but not in a lot of detail. And then I think the Texas Rocks or the Rock series to me is sort of the, I don't want to, like the gateway drug. It's kind of like the the book you'd put on your coffee table that someone might pick up that kind of gets them hooked on some interesting things about their state is that maybe speak to that a little bit yeah i think um the uh the rock series is um for the most general public like you really do not need to have any background in geology to understand what people are writing about and it features really neat state uh stops in um in the states and um and we try to write it so it's very accessible to everyone and i know writing the when my husband wrote the uh uh roadside book that gets a little bit more detailed and uh goes into a little more depth of where you're driving by like you said and then underfoot which i do have one of the underfoot oh there you go thanks for yours, yeah you're yeah that's perfect one of them and those have a lot of detail and it's like if you're going on a hike and you want to be with a geologist that book is like taking a geologist with you yeah no i think that that uh summarizes those three series really well and so i guess the the thing to convey to the listeners is that for the viewers is that the the state rocks one is a really good way to just kind of like see what's out there uh, as you go in here here's the the back cover and you can see all those little yellow stars on the map there. I think there's something like 80 specific sites. So Texas is a big state and you went through and chose 80 different sites that have just kind of an interesting geologic story that you can tell in a very easy to read one page spread, maybe like, you know, three or four paragraphs or so. Is that pretty fair description? Uh, that, that is. They're very short. They're very... Um... Uh, short and sweet and introduces people to the geology and also in the state rocks they try to get sites all over the state so there is probably a place you can visit that's within a short drive from where you live yeah and i found this really helpful i grabbed a copy when i went to the meeting where, where i saw you uh, in san antonio a few weeks ago and I actually lived in Texas and Fort Worth in high school for like a year and a half, but was not interested in geology and and didn't know really much about Texas geology. But I was really surprised in looking at your book. I'm like, there's a lot of cool. Texas is pretty awesome. Like as a as a snobbish Westerner, you're kind of like, oh, east of the Rockies, it it gets boring. But I was really uh, surprised at the diversity of geology in Texas. Yeah, and that comes from being a big state. And I'll say it actually surprised me as well. I am not a native Texan. You can probably hear that. <laughs> um, 
I actually lived in the Rocky Mountains when I was uh, younger. Um, and what surprised me when I was working on the book is I had my favorite places I would take students on field trips from my community college. But I didn't really go to any other parts of the state until I had to write this book. And then as we're driving around the state, it's like, dang, this state has a lot to offer. Yeah. Like, and I agree. Like in writing my books on Idaho it was the same thing. It kind of forced me out of the bubble I knew and into these places I didn't know very well and opened me up, opened my eyes up to this, this big world of cool geology that's out there. Um, really impressive. So let me kind of show people, uh, and I know it's through the webcam, so it's a little silly, but she does have like um, descriptions of each sort of geologic region or province. So here's like the, the Yano uplift in central Texas with some maps there. And then there's, um, yeah, here's like a typical one page spread. There's usually a little map here kind of explaining or showing where the feature is. And then you can see, you know, here's one side of the page and here's the other. So just a couple nice photos and some brief, easy to read text. You can probably read it in like 90 seconds or less. Um, but kind of a hook, right? Like this might hook people into like, hey, I want to go there or I want to find out more about that location. Yeah, and the nice thing in the back of the book, I have websites that people can visit and um, uh, further reading. So if they do read about a site and are really fascinated with it, look at the further reading and you can you can get lost down a rabbit hole learning about your favorite geologic site. Yeah, so it's kind of like the book's really like the tip of the iceberg. If there's some place that captivates you, you can dig in a little deeper, either through those sites you mentioned or the roadside book, which I should mention uh, was written by your husband, Paul, um, which is a really nice book. And most people are familiar with this series. Um, so maybe let's start with this question, Natalie. Like, why? What what prompted you to, to write this? Did someone reach out to you and... and twist your arm or was this something you really wanted to do? Well, it's it's an interesting story because it actually goes back several years. I also wrote the New Mexico rocks because I went to um, I went and got my bachelor's and master's degrees at New Mexico Institute of Mining and Technology. And then I worked at the Bureau of Geology in uh, in New Mexico. And so I approached Mountain Press and said, I love New Mexico. I'd love you have this new series. I'd love to write that book. And I did that one for them. And then they liked the photographs that Paul took in that book. And so they asked him when they were going to do this, the third edition of Roadside Geology of Texas, if he would take the photos for that. Oh. And he, he agreed. But then um, the co-author, the guy who wrote the second edition of Roadside Texas, he passed away mm. and they asked Paul to update the whole thing. And then they called me and said, uh, they being Mountain Press uh, and the editors there called me and said, since your husband's driving around and updating roadside geology <laughs> of Texas anyway, do you want to write another rocks book? And um, I thought I, I said, sure, why not? And then I got told it has to be done by GSA in San Antonio. <laughs> and I realized wow. I had a year and a half to finish it. Yeah, in a state the size of Texas. I mean, that's incredibly ambitious. As someone who helped write the roadside book for Idaho, I thought like, I'm like, Idaho's huge. It's like 500 miles. Texas is even bigger. And so like the the the, the breadth in terms of the size of area you had to cover and the timeline, it's just super impressive. You're able to like throw this all together. I was living and breathing Texas geology for a year and a half. And every opportunity we had, we were driving somewhere, um, looking at the geology, taking photos, writing uh, stops. It was it was really busy. Yeah, but it's kind of cool that you were able to, I mean, he had his book project and you had this other one and you just kind of like combined forces, drove around the state yeah. together and kind of like, piece two books together more or less at the same time, it sounds like, which is really cool. It was a lot of fun. And I mean, 
I, like I said, I really learned a lot in doing that. And it made me a better professor because now I have even more like yeah. local examples to use in my classes. Yeah. I think writing these books just makes you more knowledgeable about your state's geology and examples and, and things you can draw upon as in terms of teaching. So that's, that's really awesome. Um, we kind of talked a little bit about the process and stuff. Maybe uh, what are some sort of things like the average Texas resident, what are some things you think people don't know about Texas geology that might surprise them? I think, so I, I live outside of Houston and I live on the coastal plains and a lot of Texas is coastal plain where it's kind of flat and yeah. not much going on. <laughs> and I think a lot of the folks who live in this part of the state would be surprised to see the mountains that are out in the West and know that there's actually ancient volcanoes in that part of the state. Uh, that usually gets my students when I say the volcanoes of Texas. Now, they're old, they're not gonna erupt like tomorrow, right. but uh, they're fascinated that we had volcanic activity. So I think that's one of the really big things that a lot of people in Texas wouldn't really know about. Yeah, it sounds like maybe they're judging the whole state based on you know, the, that Gulf Coast plain in the area that they're familiar with. Um, and there's that remote western part of Texas that has, you know, world-class geology they're not aware of. Yeah. How often do people, here's, I, you know, how often do people in Texas travel around Texas, would you say, on average? Are people in Houston and Dallas and Austin, like, heading over to the western part of the state or... Some do, but a lot of people actually just stay in their yeah. little area. Right. And, and that, that seems to be true of a lot of states, unfortunately. They kind of, folks get familiar with their, their home area and sort of stay there when even some of the eastern states, there's diverse geology and it's just like drive a couple hundred miles and you're, you're going to be seeing things that are totally different. Yeah, I mean, I guess you've got Big Bend National Park as a bit of a draw. And then a lot of state parks, which are, are pretty nice. Um, but maybe there's just not like the allure or I, mean, I think it's just maybe, I don't know. What do you, what do you think's the the roadblock there? Well, lots of people know about national parks and they set their goals like I'm going to go to all the national parks or all the national parks in a certain region. And they don't, it's like bad advertising, I guess, almost. Right. Uh, because honestly, um, doing this, Texas, uh, Texas Parks and Wildlife, who runs the state park system, they, I was so impressed. Their state parks are amazing. And the folks working in the state parks were so friendly and helpful. And I mean, there's, there's places... Like one of my favorite places in the state, if not the absolute favorite, is a place called Caprock Canyons. And it's got red rock canyons that rival Utah. I mean, if you wow. drop someone off, they might say like, hey, uh, am I in Utah or yeah. Arizona? <laughs> and and it's beautiful. And it's also the site of the state bison herd. So there's all these like just mm. random bison wandering around. And, and it's remote and it's beautiful and it's a dark sky park. And I talk about it and almost no one knows it exists. <laughs> like even native Texans, they're like, where is that? And I, th I think it's just sometimes it's just bad advertising. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I think, I think you're going to hear, and maybe you already have heard some feedback as, as this book becomes more uh, mainstream and and gets out there in the public. You're, I, I would guess you're probably going to hear from folks who say exactly that that your book has opened them up to these places. Hey, I'm a lifelong Texas, you know, native, and I didn't know these places exist. Or you you turned me on to some cool places that um, I wasn't aware of. I, I had that with uh, New Mexico when I wrote that, yeah. and my husband wrote one on Michigan, and it happens, I think, with every state. It opens up a, a new view of, of people's home states as yeah. what, uh, what they can offer. Yeah, no, that's I mean that's fantastic. I mean it's really well well written. I've been very impressed with all the all these publications that have come out, and they seem like they get you know they're good, but they almost seem like they get better as we go. If I look back to like that first, I think the first rocks book, I don't think it was Michigan. It might have been maybe some other Midwestern state. Do you know? 
I thought it was Arizona or California. It might be Arizona, then, yeah. Then Ohio, I think. Ohio, so I, yeah. And they've only done maybe like, they've done Idaho. They've only probably done maybe 10 or a dozen or so of the state so far with this new uh, this new series. Because it is the newer series as compared to the yeah. Underfoot and the, um, the Roadside series. And I mean, the editors at Mountain Press and then Chelsea, the illustrator, just do a fabulous job. I mean, they make the authors look good. Yeah, <laughs> they yeah. They catch all the things we we do wrong. <laughs> yes. No, you're in, you're in good hands for sure. Um, yeah. What about a little bit more about the, the process? Did you did you send it out to other geologists to kind of vet the information or did you feel pretty good about it just between you and your husband? But, but of course, my husband read it, and then um, Mountain Press, the editors, had me send it to another geologist here in Texas, who actually, uh, now he is a professor at a college in San Antonio. Oh, okay. And, uh, and so he read it to make sure that we didn't say anything that was really, right. <laughs> really wrong. He yeah. was really fact-checking for us. Yeah. And he read both. Uh, the uh, Roadside Geology of Texas and my Texas Rocks book. Right. Um, and did a nice job uh, with that. Did, was there any, uh, with Mountain Press and the editing team there, was there, uh, did you have to limit it to the 80 places? Like, was there a, like a, a size or a, a, a word count kind of thing where you're like, I've got 122 spots and they had, had you pare it down or what was that part like? <laughs> Um, they didn't have me do that, but I kind of looking at other rocks books, I realized I was kind of pushing it with 80 stops. Um, well, you are none of the other ones. You are the second largest many. state. So I think we, a little latitude is necessary here. And, and so they let me have the 80, but I, I kind of, while it was unspoken, I got the feeling they didn't want me to put too much more in there. Right. You, you realized you were kind of at your maximum in there. So, well, that's, yeah. that's fantastic. Um, yeah. What are, so folks can get this, uh, obviously like Amazon and places like that, or there's some other specific sites or locations you want to mention where people can pick up both your Again, Texas Rocks book and the new Roadside Geology of Texas, new edition, all color. Well, the uh, the Geological Society of America bookstore, um, it's uh, geosociety.org. Uh, they also sell it as well as directly from Mountain Press Publishers. But I do know a lot of local bookstores in Texas are handling these. Like my local Barnes and Noble uh, has copies of it. Right. And uh, so you might not have to order it. You might be able to just go to a, a local bookstore if you live in Texas. Yeah. And certainly we want, we want to support that. Uh, if it's a state park and they have like a little gift shop bookstore, they're likely to be carrying it as well. Um, yeah. Actually, I do know Parks and Wildlife is uh, is carrying it. So Yeah. Well, have I, your uh, have your students found out that you wrote this? Has it like added any extra cachet to your you know your your position as their professor? Or are they kind of oblivious? Um, most of them know, uh, and and some actually are quite excited about about it, and some yeah. have bought it uh, to read about like their favorite part of the state. Um, but I mean, you know how students are. Yeah. Some there is not a thing you can do to make them excited. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> or at least it's hard to gauge how excited they might be about it for sure. Yeah. And, and so. so it it is nice. And I, I actually use some of the illustrations and some of the diagrams that were made for me. I use them in my classes now yeah. because why not? They are so they're clear and they're well done. And I'm like, why not? Yeah. I'm, I'll use those well i think it's yeah it's it's fantastic it's a great book um it's it's got me motivated to try to come back to texas sometime soon because there's just so much cool geology out there to explore but uh one last time again texas rocks a guide to geologic sites in the lone star stage natalie brandis photographs by her husband um natalie this has been awesome thanks so much for taking some time with us to uh, share a little bit about the process and 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 what you learned and just how this book came to be. Well, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks so much. Well, we appreciate you coming on and uh, we'll, we'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Excellent.